In this video, we're going to explore an extremely important concept which many students struggle with. Not because it's difficult, but I think in class they just don't spend enough time or they don't explain it in a nice way that makes sense. So in this, in this video, I'm going to take the time to show you exactly what we mean when we talk about a converging or a diverging sequence. So your teacher might not mention the word diverging, but they definitely talk about converging. Okay, now diverging is just the opposite, but we'll get to that. So if we had to look at this sequence over here, is this an arithmetic or a geometric? So remember, an arithmetic is when you add a constant number or minus a constant number, whereas a geometric is when you multiply. Well, let's take a look. So to get from three to five, you would add two, and then this pattern continues. You just keep adding two. So this is an arithmetic pattern. Now, if I had to ask you, well, in fact, let's take a look at something. Let's have a look at the sum as we go along. Okay, so let's do a little experiment. So let's see how, okay, so in position one, we have a term value of three, and so the sum would be three. At position two, we have a five, and so the sum would now be eight. Then we have a seven, and so the sum is 15. And then you can see how this just carries on. So if we had to look at the sum column, which is this one over here, do those numbers appear to be getting smaller or bigger? Well, they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is called diverge. Diverge looks like this. You start off at a particular point and the numbers just get further and further apart. So what it, what it means is that the sum just grows further and it gets wider and wider. It doesn't get to one particular value. Okay, so that's gonna be a diverging pattern. Let's look at another pattern. So if we take a look at this over here, this is also a um, arithmetic. We are minusing three each time. So minus five minus three is minus eight, minus eight minus, minus three is minus 11. So we're minusing three each time. So that should say minus three. So let's have a look at the little experiment. So the term value, well, the first one is minus two, and so the sum would be minus two. The next term is minus five, and so your sum would now be negative seven. Then it's negative eight, so that takes us to negative 15. And then negative 11, and it's, that'll take us to negative 26. Okay, and then we don't have a fifth and sixth position for this one. So have a look at these, uh, these numbers over here. They are just gonna keep growing, okay? So they're gonna get bigger, well, bigger but more negative. So technically they're getting smaller, but you'll see that they're not gonna approach one particular value. They're just gonna keep changing, okay? So that is also gonna be called diverging. So it would look something like that, where the numbers move further and further apart. So we're not getting to one particular value. This might make a bit more sense as soon as we see a converging sequence, and then you'll see the difference. So let's look at a different one. If we have a look at the sequence over here, this is a geometric sequence where we have to divide by two to get from one term to the next. However, your R value is not gonna be two because that's what you're dividing by. R always has to be what are you multiplying by? Well, if you're dividing by two, that is the same as multiplying by a half. So R is gonna be a half. Now something interesting is going to happen here. So the, the first term has a value of 250, and so the sum is 250. The next term value is 125, and so the sum is 375. Then it goes to 62 and a half, and they have gone and filled up to the fifth position. Now something interesting is happening here. If you looked at the previous examples I showed you in this video, the term values, the numbers themselves were always getting bigger. So I know some of them had a negative, but forgetting about the negatives, the actual number became bigger and bigger and bigger each time. And so what we saw was that the sum just kept growing. But look carefully, imagine what's gonna happen if we keep going, these term values, so this middle column, those are getting halved each time. And so eventually, those term values are gonna become so small that the calculator will actually approximate it to zero. So let's say by the time we get to term 50, your, these term values start becoming zero. Then at that point, let's say your, your sum value is 490, or well, let's say the sum value over here was 499. Well, if you're gonna be adding zero each time thereafter, then your sum 
is going to stay constant. You're going to be adding 0 each time and so your sum will just be 499 the whole time. And so that is called a converging sequence. It's when your term value eventually approaches 0 because it's getting halved each time in this example and so the sum will eventually stay constant. So mathematically, and we'll learn how to do this, the absolute maximum that this sum would ever get to is going to be 500. This sum will never ever go above 500. So you can go try this out at home. I don't know how long it's going to take until you get to 500 in the sum column, but it will never ever go above 500 because eventually you're going to be adding zeros. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So we're going to look at another sequence and then we're going to draw up a conclusion as to when a sequence converges and when it diverges. So let's take a look at this sequence. Well, this is also a geometric. To get from the one to the other, you have to divide by negative two. So if you divide the 20 by negative two, well then it switches to a negative. And then if you divide negative 10 by negative two, it switches back to a positive. Okay, so the first term value is negative 40. So the sum is also gonna be negative 40. Then your next term is a 20, and so your sum is going to be negative 20, because you're going, oh no, you're, sorry, you're, for number 2, the term value is 20, and so the sum is negative 20. Then for your third term value, that's negative 10, and so your sum will be negative 30 now, so it's going a bit backwards and forwards. Then for number 4, your term value is 5, and so your sum will be negative 25. And what we can start to see is that what is eventually going to happen to these numbers over here? Well, they're halving each time. I know there's a negative, but that's not really going to affect every, anything at the end. Because 40 is becoming 20, 20 is becoming 10, 10 is becoming 5. And so eventually, 5 is going to half, 2.5 is going to half, everything's going to half, and eventually you're going to get to such a small number that we're going to approximate it as 0. So what happens to this column? over here when you are adding 0 each time well you're just going to keep you, your your sum is going to stay at the same value for example if you have a term which goes like this 5 2 1 0 0 0 then let's look at the sum well the sum would be 5 for the first one then 7 then 8 and then it would just stay 8 because you're adding 0 each time and so this is also going to be a converging sequence. Why? Because the sum is eventually going to approach a constant number and then it will stop growing. So we are now at a position where we can summarize which types of sequences are going to converge and which types of sequences are going to diverge. So all arithmetic sequences will diverge. Then your geometric sequences, they aren't all going to converge. They will only converge if the numbers are getting smaller. Now be very careful in just understanding what I mean by that. I'm not talking about negatives. So for example, if we have a geometric sequence like this, then you're dividing by negative 2 each time. Forget about the negatives, just look at the numbers themselves. The 10, the 5, the 2.5 and the 1.25. If those are getting smaller, the negatives don't really make a difference. Because even though the numbers are switching from negative to positive, the numbers themselves are getting smaller. And eventually, you're going to end up with a zero. Because it'll just get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, that will become zero. And so your sum will stay constant. So that's it. All arithmetic sequences, they diverge. And then geometric sequences, they will converge if the numbers are getting smaller. So what teachers often do is they'll say as long as r is bigger than minus 1 and smaller than 1. So that's the same way of saying that the numbers are getting smaller. But please just ignore the negatives. Okay, so the, um, as long as the actual numbers are going to be getting smaller, then it will converge.